All right, everyone, welcome to Writing Start Information Night for Walla Walla Community College. This is a joint session between our Walla Walla and Clarkston campus. Um, same information applies to both. There's a slightly different contact information, which will be listed in our PowerPoint. I did want to introduce just a few people who are important to the college to all of you tonight, starting first with our president of the college, Dr. Chad Hickox. Dr. Hickox, would you please introduce yourself? Well, thank you, Diana. Yes, I very, very briefly, I just wanted to be here to the well all and, and tell you how excited we are uh, at the prospect of you joining uh, our college as Running Start students. So uh, you're going to get a lot of information tonight. And one of the things that I wanted to emphasize to you is many people have different needs when it comes to the pandemic. And some people absolutely uh, insist on having in-person classes, and some people absolutely uh, require uh, virtual classes, and we believe that we're going to be able to accommodate those needs uh, starting. We're already doing that now, but we're going to be able to do that when you're starting in the, in the summer or fall um, in a really big way. We're, we're planning fully to uh, have a much larger presence in person, mask to mask uh, instruction. And we believe that anybody who has uh, a desire for an entirely online schedule should be able to get that. And anybody has a, anybody who has a desire for an entirely uh, in-person schedule should be able to get that. So uh, we're we're feeling our way through this pandemic, as is everyone. But we're we're open to uh, to whatever your needs are, and we're going to do everything we can to help you. So pay attention tonight. Diana and her team have a lot of really excellent information. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Chad. Um, it is a lot of information, but again, it will be posted online on our website so you can revisit it and get some information and we'll have our contact information listed so you can ask us questions along the way. Um, it is a process that works best when we work together. So I'd also like to introduce Heather Markwalder, who is our uh, uh, advisor extraordinaire for our Clarkston campus and she is heading, heading up the Rain Start program there. Heather, would you like to introduce yourself? I am so sorry my video is not working tonight. Wouldn't be a, a good Zoom meeting without some technical difficulties. So we have learned to roll with that over this past year during the pandemic. I um, am here as the Clarkston representative, as Diana said, for Running Start, and we'll be monitoring the chat this evening. Um, I think we'll hold most questions till the end because as we found in the last presentation, Diana's already kind of scheduled to address most of those questions throughout her presentation, yet I'm sure there'll be a ton of questions at the end that we maybe didn't address um, and always great questions. Um, but please type your questions in the chat and um, if it sounds like most people have already done this, but if you wouldn't mind muting yourself that helps kind of eliminate some of the uh, chatter and noise that we hear as we're trying to present so everyone can hear. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you for being here. Looking forward to having you and or your students or, or kids in our Running Start program. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. And uh, Finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Susanna. She is one of our student ambassadors on the Walla Walla campus. She is here um, to help. If you have any questions and you feel more comfortable asking in Spanish, Susanna is here to help do interpretation for us translation duties. Um, Susanna is awesome. Um, and our student ambassadors do have their own email. So if you'd like to hear like kind of the real deal about the college from a a real student. Um, Susanna is one of our student ambassadors who'd be answering that email. Susanna, would you like to say anything? Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for introducing me, Diana. I love being a student ambassador and Walla Walla Community College is lit. <laughs> Thank you, Susanna. I think that's probably the coolest thing we've ever had about an intro for the college. Love it. All right, everyone. So we are recording this session. It will be available on our uh, website uh, probably next week is when we'll get that done. I'm going to start up our um, attempt to start up the PowerPoint. It's always a little scary trying to make this happen. Let me see if I can get this thing going for y'all. All right, come on, computer. Ta -da! All right. 
Running Start Information Night. As Heather mentioned, we do have our chat open, so you can ask questions along the way. Um, Heather will be managing that for me as I give you all this really important information. So away we go. What is Running Start? Running Start was established by the state of Washington in 1990. So it's a well-established program in our state. Um, my brother, and I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but my brother actually participated in this program back at the midway point uh -huh, for that. Um, and it helped him make a great transition to WSU where he majored in astrophysics. So um, it's a great program. Um, it is designed for 11th and 12th graders to attend a community college and earn both college and high school credit at the same time. The program covers the cost of tuition, but fees and books are a responsibility of the student and their family. Why would you want to take classes at WWCC besides Susanna saying we are lit? I'm probably saying that totally wrong, but it's okay. So first thing, save money in pursuit of your college goals. Community colleges, uh, tuition-wise, is cheaper than universities. We have many programs and degrees and classes to help you help students explore their options and many different ways to, for us to help students achieve their goals, whatever that may be. We do have small classroom sizes. Our largest academic size when uh, we are on campus is 40 students. Averaging is around 20 to 25 students per class. So it's pretty cl small classroom size. Um, we have exceptional faculty who teach our classes. They care about student success. They care about students getting the full advantage of the experience at the community college. Um, I always tell students there's advantages and disadvantages of being at a small community college. The advantage is when you go to class, your instructor knows who you are, will know something about what your goals are, what your, why are you in the class, and they care about that. The disadvantage is that your instructor knows who you are, what your goals are, and why you're in the class. So plus and minuses of the small community colleges. Um, we have a lot of support structures in place for students. Uh, first and foremost is our mandatory advising model. Every student who is pursuing classes towards a degree or towards a goal um, has to meet with an individual, with an advisor one-on-one -on -one every quarter to talk about classes, talk about how things are going, and make a plan for their educational plan. Um, these advisors are all trained. They are all trained in multiple areas of educational planning. Um, they're there to help you. And as you're gonna hear this a lot from me, communication is key. We also have mental health counseling available for free to our students. We have tutoring resources. Career and transfer planning is all part of our advising packaging. Um, and we have a lot of fun resources on campus. Thank you, Susanna. Um, also, really great part about WWCC is that through the Rain Start program, you can get a taste of the college experience and start working towards whatever your career goals are. So it's, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing experience. You could come to the college and take one class just to get a feel for what it's like um, and still get a valuable experience from that. So some Running Start quick facts, just so you know how awesome the program is. Running Start cohorts earn around 8,000 college credits um, over the time that they are at the college. That's a ton of credits. On average, we have about 230 to 275 Running Start students in the program between Walla Walla and Kirkston campuses. Um, every single student is advised by the same advisor for Running Start, who is there to manage their program, make sure they are getting the classes that they need and helping them navigate through the uh, college experience. 81% of student grades are C's or above earned at the community college, and that is a phenomenal percentage. Every year, 30 to 40 Running Start seniors earn an associate's degree or at least within one quarter of earning degree at the time of their high school graduation. Um, it is an exciting time where uh, a lot of our high school seniors have the opportunity to participate in two graduation ceremonies if they would like to. In general, Running Start students tend to outperform traditional students at the college. Um, many of our Running Start students take advantage of our honors program. Um, it's a really fun time. Um, just by being interested in Running Start, um, you are demonstrating a urge to learn more and to take advantage of opportunities, and we are in full support of you doing that. So the experience. 
a lot of people ask, are ready stars treated differently at the college? Like, are they going to know who I am? And the answer is no, really. Um, faculty, other students will not know that you're a ready start student, really, unless you tell them. Um, only the advisor who oversees Running Start will know that you are a Running Start student um, because that person's constantly checking up on you to make sure that you're on track. Um, students are treated the same as WWCC students. You have subject to the same policies, procedures, and the same code of conduct as every other college student. Running Start students, this is important for parents now, are under the same right to privacy rules as other college students. We call this FERPA, which is fun to say. Everyone say it behind the mute, FERPA, I know you want to. Family Education Right to Privacy Act. So in high school parents, um, you can check up on your student. You can talk with their counselor. You can talk with the principal. You can talk with their teachers and say, okay, what happened on that last exam and how are they doing and what's going on? I get a weekly update on my middle school student on how they're doing in classes. That does not happen at the college. At the college, you may call their advisor or an instructor and say, I wanna know how they're doing. And we'll say, I'm sorry, but they are protected by FERPA unless there is a, a release information form on file for your student. So release information means that your student tells us that it's okay for us to talk to you about their school stuff. So that's the important like big difference for parents in the Running Start experience. Just keep that in mind. We do walk students through the release information information and talk about FERPA when they do their intake process with us. Now, there are some restrictions in regards to Running Start. Um, running Start students are not eligible for financial aid. You have to have graduated from high school or achieved a high school credential in order to be eligible. Um, limited from some campus employment. Um, and you're not allowed to participate in intercollegiate really athletics. But that's about it. Some nuts and bolts. Lots of nuts and bolts when it comes to Running Start. Credit equivalencies. So a lot of times, um, I'll talk with a student and like, I wanna be full time, let's go. And we talk about classes and I say, all right, we got three classes, that's full time. And they look at me like, what? So one of the important things to know is that a WWCC credit is a five credit course for academics. And that is equal to one high school credit. A WWCC thread credit course is equal to a half a high school credit. So think about a five credit WWCC course is equal to a full year class and you take that one five credit course in 10 weeks at the community college. So just think about that. We'll keep you busy, don't you worry about that. One of the weird things about uh, Running Start is navigating PE. Five WWCC one credit PE courses is equal to that one high school credit. So that is something we talk about when we're doing advising and navigate, like how are we gonna make this work for you so we can keep you on track. Um, at For every single high school, we serve a oh gosh, I want to say around 10 different high schools um, from the college between the Clarkson campus and Walla Walla campus. Um, and every high school determines their own course equivalencies. So if as a Running Start student, you need your English courses for junior and senior year, um, that may mean different things depending on where your high school is coming from. For some schools, that means English 101, English 102 in a literature class. Sometimes it's just English 101 and 102. We have equivalency sheets. Those are negotiated every year with the high schools um, to make sure that we are meeting their curriculum needs at those high schools. So don't worry, we got you covered. We got that information for you. Below on this table is a list of how many high school courses you could take and what that means, how many credits you could take per quarter at the community college. So the, these are the conversations that you have with your um, high school counselor and your Running Start advisor to figure out what that balance is gonna look like for you. Again, I just wanna emphasize, Running Start is about making this an experience that works for you. So whatever that looks like, if it is a full-time load at the community college, great. If that is just one class at the community college, that's great too. We're excited to have you. We wanna give you a great college experience while you're in high school. Just be sure to keep those communication lines open. Some more nuts and bolts. So. You know, I mentioned how many Rain Start students we have that completed AA every year. So completing an AA degree typically requires 15 college credits every quarter over six quarters. So two years, full-time enrollment. Um, things that help you along the way is getting college level reading, college level writing, and a math placement. And we'll talk about placement in just a little bit towards the end of our session.
Um, to complete an AA degree, you do need a cumulative GPA of a 2.0. That means getting a C average grade in all your classes at the college. Um, for all new Running Start students, um, all of our new students are required to take a first year experience course in the first quarter that you're enrolled. Um, this is a three credit course that covers kind of your need to know stuff for being a college student. So stuff like time management, study skills. Um, we're going to spend time talking about academics and career advising. And also, um, I know you're ready to start and part of your education is for free except for fees and books. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, but we're gonna spend some time talking about financing your education and what does that look like and how do you make sure that you're using your money as best that you can during, throughout the experience. So that all that kind of good stuff is covered in first year experience. Um, as Dr. Hickox mentioned about, uh, before, we will be having an adaptable uh, class program this fall. Um, usually, pre-COVID times, um, we had a four-day school week, which is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, typically. Um, but we have learned how to be adaptable with using Zoom, with using hybrid, and our online tools to help students still engage in the educational experience. Um, th that's kind of our game plan for the fall. Time. Scheduling is important. And again, you're going to hear me say this a lot communication is key. So the college operates on quarters. That's three quarters every year. So we start in late September and go to December. We start in January and go to March. And then we start late March and go to about the second week of June. Um, so it, that's fall, winter, and spring quarters. Um, summer quarter is not eligible for running start assistance. So that would be paid out of pocket. Each quarter is 11 weeks each. For each hour that you are in class, expect to have a couple hours of homework average in a college class. That's why that three classes is a full-time load, my friends, when you're in college. Um, stuff to think about is transportation to and from the high school if you're attending classes on campus. Um, Running Start does not provide transportation out to the college, so that's something to think about and plan for. How you can get back and forth, how much time does it take? Do not think that you're gonna race the back roads between here and Wahai. I grew up here, I know about those back roads. Um, you still think about safely traveling back and forth. Um, one of the big things is balancing your high school and college schedule and any high school activities that you're having. So this is all part of the conversations that we have. Um, we do talk about, are you working? Um, where are you coming from? Do you have decent transportation? How is your technology needs looking? So we can ensure that you have all the resources that you need to be successful in your college. So again, communication is key in all ways. So again, continuing on the theme of time, um, this is just an outlook of the schedule, of the annual schedule between Wallowell Public Schools and the college calendar. Just make a note that we end our years around the same time, but we start our years at very different times. There's a nearly a month difference sometimes. Um, there's a couple weeks where we're just off sync. One of the things that's always off sync is spring break. So spring break is usually the first week of April for our public schools. And we are always, we're actually in spring break right now at the community college. So uh, just be sure to know those differences. And I think I hear someone is not muted. If you could please mute yourself, that helps with the recording for the session. Thank you so much. Okay, couple of money matters. So tuition and fees, like what's the bottom line? How much are you gonna spend on this? So on the left-hand side, you have traditional WWCC student and how much it costs per credits. And this is tuition and fees for in-state tuition. On the right-hand side is about the average cost for a Running Start student. So as I mentioned before, Running Start covers the cost of tuition, but not the fees. So fees and books are still a responsibility of students. And I'll talk about some waivers here in just a second. So this is part of the conversation to have with your parents, with your family, with your high school counselor is about the cost of doing the program. There's still associated costs. You're still saving a bundle of money by doing Running Start for a full year. Um, it would be over $3,000 if you're attending full-time which could be like $6,000 over two years if you do a two-year degree. Um, so just be thinking about that and doing that 
budgeting with your family? What's going to be manageable? What makes sense? What are our circumstances and what can we do to make this work for us as a family? So as I said before, when you start, students still pay for fees for classes. So fees include things like facility use, technology fees, and comprehensive fees that have been voted on by our student uh, government, which is all the students get to vote on that. Um, there are fees that are directly related to the course that your student will enroll in. So things like science courses, there are lab fees that get tagged onto that um, as you're enrolling the course to cover the cost of using the materials in the lab, um, keeping the hoods running in the lab so we're all safe, all that kind of good stuff. So, and again, there's that list of the average fees can be 250 to 350 on a 15 credit load. Again, kind of depends on what courses you're in. Um, some workforce classes have additional fees to cover the cost of those workforce courses. We talk about that when you're advising. Now, there are some fee waivers available for income eligible students. Um, when, and we'll talk about this just a little bit, is there is paperwork that you got to do as a Rain Start student. Um, you bring that paperwork to us. Usually your high school counselor will mark if you are eligible for free and reduced lunch. And that means you can be, um, we will waive the fees for you and you can be eligible for transportation and textbook assistance. Um, those are the things that we can provide for income el eligible students to help you with the cost of attending college. So other things, books, yeah, you're gonna need them. So costs can vary greatly across it. And again, it has a lot to do with the courses that you take. So there are some English courses that have everything is online text, everything's free, it's online, don't have to pay a thing. But then you have some books like our anatomy and physiology class that's over $200 for that bundle of books that you need for that class. And then we have the in-between like for general psychology where there's a free online text, but you still gotta buy a clicker to participate in class. So it varies wide, widely across the different types of courses that we have. Um, don't be afraid to ask. We can help you figure that out and look at the cost for textbooks and help you kind of figure out what your budget's gonna look like. Some of the tips, for buying books, and this applies across your entire college life, is look for used books. They're usually 25% less than the new price. Um, if you're going to a university, uh, sometimes that is a race for the first day that books are available where people are fighting over used textbooks. I went to WSU, I've seen it happen, um, but just be aware that textbooks can be gold sometimes. At our college, we do do textbook rental, which is a significantly less um, than buying the books outright. Um, that is available for some courses. Um, when you go to get your books, um, you can or currently you can order your books online from our college store. Um, we always say have your class schedule with you so you can be sure you're selecting the correct course as you look stuff up. And there is assistance again for income eligible students to help cover the cost of your books and supplies. So one of the questions that comes a lot comes up a lot with Rainy Star is, do, is this going to impact my financial aid in the future because I'm getting this for free right now? And the, the answer is in regards to financial aid, yeah, in some ways it will. So the most important, more important part is keep in mind that your college transcript starts now. As soon as you enroll into a college class, that becomes part of your college transcript. And in the future, I mean, first of all, we want everyone to be successful. The last thing that we want to have happen to anyone is having a bad experience where you struggle with classes at the college and you end up behind, not only in regards to your high school credits, but also we don't want you to end up in a have, digging yourself into a hole in regards to a, a GPA that's not the best that we know that you could do. So that's the first thing. It's just we want you to be successful. The other thing to think in mind is financial aid in the future um, has this thing called satisfactory academic progress, um, which means they look at the entirety of your uh, academic history and look, do, there's a percentage formula that you get. And if you've been successful, you're in the good. But if you fall below a percentage point of success, you could end up needing to do extra work for financial aid and be on an academic plan for financial aid. Um, Again, we don't want to see anyone in this place. So that's why we 
Again, that communication is key. We monitor our Running Start students really closely to make sure they're getting what they need and having those tough conversations around, okay, so what's going on and what can we do to help you be successful in this experience? Um, there is a limit to how many credits you can have attempted and achieved and still be eligible for financial aid programs. So it's not a free for all in financial aid. There does come a limit where you're like, okay, you've got enough credits, you need to have completed a degree by now. Um, but that's part of our advising process to sit down and talk about, okay, here's what you need for high school. How do we make the best use of your credits here so that it's going to pay off for you in the future? Educational planning, perfect lead in. First goal of Writing Start, making sure that you meet your high school graduation requirements. Part of that is that communication part. So you remember I mentioned paperwork a little bit earlier? This is where it comes into play. So with Running Start, you get documents from your high school counselor that tells us, the Running Start advisors, what do you need to meet your high school graduation requirements? What are those things we need to make sure we get checked off to make sure you're gonna graduate on time? That is priority number one. Always just to make sure that that is our target and that's gonna happen on time for you in the best way possible. Second goal, giving you that college experience to help you be better prepared for being a full-time, college student. Um, we want you to get a good education and maybe have a little bit of fun and learn about what does it mean to be a successful college student. Um, we are there to support you the entire way through with all the resources I mentioned earlier. Um, again, I cannot stress this amount. We want this to be a positive experience for you along the way. Third goal of Running Start, after we get your high school graduation requirements taken care of, we've got a plan for that. We have supported you and make sure that you got the tools that you need to have a good successful experience is helping you take appropriate courses to help you with your future career goals. Now, I'm going to talk about transfer in just a little bit, but uh, in college, um, the courses that you take do matter for the future. So it's not a free for all, although it can feel that way sometimes. We want you to have a game plan and we're there to help you support that game plan. Let's talk transfer. So, a lot of people have the goal of completing an AA degree by the time they finish Running Start. So, there are some things to consider. First and foremost, this is the thing that kind of gets some of our students caught up sometimes, is that even though you graduate from high school and you have college credit or you finish an AA degree, according to universities, you are still a freshman applicant, which means you still have to meet admission requirements for the university. We call those CARES. And I can't remember what it stands for right now. Eh, that's all right. Caters include things like having two years of a world language, having three years of math, including algebra from your high school, having four years of English, um, having a science course that is algebra based is one of the things that we always worry about in Running Start is making sure we get that done. So keeping that in mind that you still have to do tests, you still need to meet those minimum requirements for universities as part of our conversation when we do advising. Nice thing about being a freshman applicant is there's a lot of scholarships out there for freshman applicants. So you are still eligible for freshman, uh, freshman scholarships. Um, one of the requirements for a lot of freshmen at universities is on, on campus housing. Some schools do require that you live on campus when you are a freshman. So even though you've got this college experience, they still see you as a freshman. Um, financial age eligibility, we talked about that and just keeping an eye on your credits and making sure you're getting the best bang for your buck uh, when it comes to the courses that you take. You will still be required to take new student orientations. And uh, for many schools, there are still ACT or SAT test requirements. Um, I know this year, some schools have waived that due to COVID. Um, not sure yet if those are gonna come back or not. Um, time will tell on, what universities decide to do about that. But just something keep on your radar. The other thing when we're talking about AA degree and transfer is the difference between being ready to go to a university and the difference between um, and being ready for a major. And I know these questions will come up. So I'll do kind of, I'll try to give you the brush first and then we'll probably do a deep dive later. So an AA degree, does great things for you as a student, and it, it's great. So um, Washington State is, was one of the early leaders in transfer planning as a state. Um, the AA degree is the granddaddy of all the transfer degrees. So what it does, it gives you junior level status, 
it satisfies general education requirements, and it's flexible enough that we can make it match up with most majors. And here's the key, is that if you complete an AA degree and you're just throwing classes in there, like, yeah, I'll do that, yeah, I'll do that. And then you get to the university and you wanna major in business, you could be starting at a freshman level because there are specific prerequisites to get ready for that major. And it's not just business, there are other different majors have specific requirements that you need to get into. Um, the one that I always find interesting and a little frustrating, honestly, is elementary education. You think elementary ed, pretty straightforward, right? No, it's one of the pickiest majors out there and every university is, seems to like to do their own thing. So that's part of that mandatory advising requirement is having those conversations around, what do you think you wanna do? And what can we do to help prepare you for that pathway? So do we have the specific courses that you need in order to be ready for that? Awesome, we will try to fit that in as best we can. Although I have to say sometimes meeting your high school graduation requirements can give us a little bit of friction with getting you ready for a major. And that's okay, you're still way ahead of the curve by doing Running Start. Um, our job is to help you, help teach you about the differences between the different majors and make sure that you know what you're getting and what you need to do when you get to your university. That's the job of your advisors to help you learn about that. So go ahead and put in the questions. I know you got more. So here's our website, wwcc.edu slash transfer. This is our transfer center website. Tips, timelets, timelines, checklists, and information about transfer. There are links to our regional um, universities in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, where you can look up majors, look up their scholarship stuff, look up admission requirements, all that kind of good stuff is listed there on that website. And um, I, I spend a lot of time talking about transfer because with Running Start, um, most of the courses that you take for your high school fit best into that transfer pathway. But we do have a lot of really phenomenal workforce programs. Workforce programs are two-year de two degrees that lead directly to employment when you are complete that degree. Um, as Running Start, you can be eligible for participating in a workforce program. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that open communication between your high school counselor and the college. Um, workforce programs, a lot of them require full-time enrollment. And by full-time, I mean, you are on campus doing lectures, working in labs, working in the shops, if you're doing something like diesel or energy systems, um, it's an eight to four day. So have those conversations. If that's something, excuse me, you're interested in doing, have that conversation with your high school counselor and make sure you have a good, strong plan for heading into that. And then talk to us about that. We'll help you navigate the waters of doing that kind of plan. We do have multiple uh, certificate programs that can be achieved in within one quarter. We are offering the American Dream Academy to our community. Um, there's a website there. I think there's one more session tomorrow. Uh, we offer GED exams, adult high school diploma. We have um, community ed programs. Um, a lot of Ready Start students actually start out with us doing kids college through our community education program. So a lot of opportunities to take advantage of at the college. Resources. So we have a lot of things. Again, it is about your student success. So resources that we have includes a phenomenal library and library staff. We have mental health counseling that's available to all of our students, regardless of if you're a traditional student or a Rain Start student. We have career assessment and exploration. We're here to help you with transfer planning. We have disability support services. I uh, sometimes hear from students um, who have been on a 504 IEP uh, in high school or in their K through 12 education and think, oh, that's not for me. Well, actually it could be for you. We do have disability support services on a campus there to help support you along the way and help figure out um, how do you manage your challenges at a college as opposed to K through 12. The system is a little bit different and this could be a way to kind of touch your toes into the water to figure out what does that mean and what, what does the um, college have to available to me to use. Um, there's also short-term disabilities too. Um, I have had students um, end up breaking a leg or injuring themselves in some way where they actually had to meet with our disability support coordinator to talk about, I need a special chair or I can't attend class at this one time because I'm on this temporary medication that makes me really sleepy at night. 
they are there to help you figure out that stuff. It does not, you do not have to do this alone. You do not have to figure out on your own. Talk with our disability support services um, about how that might look for you at the college. We do have a tutoring and learning center available to our students where we have expert math tutors available. Um, in the time of COVID, that is available online, which is pretty phenomenal if you ask me. Um, they're there to help students. If you get, it's for free, you just show up and ask for help if you're struggling with math or English and sciences we have available. We do have computer labs. Um, we have had uh, labs open on a limited basis during COVID. Um, in case you need a specific program or maybe you just need a quiet place to do your homework, we have those labs available on a limited basis right now. Um, be sure to check online for what that looks like. And student activities, this is probably the most fun part. As a student, you are eligible to participate in our many student activities available through the college. Um, they do things like, uh, we've had festivals out in front of the college um, pre-COVID uh, <laughs> with food and music and fun activities and games around. Um, they've done karaoke online. They've done um, Jeopardy nights online. Um, lots of cool, fun things. And they still have maintained to uh, do activities in the COVID era. Um, looking forward to being back on campus and seeing people hang out on the grass. So meat and potatoes, enrollment steps. How do I do this? So first thing is to understand eligibility. You must have junior or senior status as determined by your high school for next year. So if you're currently a sophomore or a junior, you can be eligible next year. It is a max of two years eligibility, nothing past that. You must be enrolled in a public high school. Um, however, if you're enrolled in a private school or a, are a home school student, you can get a pass-through option through one of our public schools. Um, we'll get through that. Uh, just, we'll talk through our other enrollment steps. And when you contact the high school, you contact the high school and just let them know, hey, I'm a student through this program or through this school, I'd like to do Running Start. They sign off on your documents. And then we talk about what your game plan is for that. You must be under 21 years of age and have not earned a high school diploma previously. And you must qualify for some college level courses. So one through eight, apply for admission at the college. It's free. There's an online application. It's on our home site, homepage. Um, if you go to admissions and click on apply now, you're there. After you complete the application for admissions, wait for your acceptance letter. That will come as an email to whatever email you provide for us. And there will be additional instructions there for how to set up a login with the college. And this is your key to all things. So it's really important to make sure you get that acceptance letter so you get your next steps. After you get that login set up, visit our student intake portal. And one of the first questions it's going to ask is, what is your goal here? And one of the options will be running start click that Ready Start option, and then we will know to track you down for Ready Start. Um, complete the placement test. This is housed within the student intake portal. Um, there's a section where you click Start Placement, and that's where uh, you go through the placement process. They lead you through it step by step. Um, one of the parts when you set up your, as soon as you're accepted to the college and you've set up your login to the system, you have a WWCC student email. This will be your primary contact for all this information that you're going to be getting. So placement process, student email. When you get your placement, go visit your high school counselor and get your Running Start paperwork. This is key. This tells us what you need to do for high school graduation and tells us how many credits you're eligible for at the college. So we can do really good planning, make sure that you don't get over enrolled and end up being charged a whole lot of money. Um, very key important information is to get that paperwork. When you get that paperwork, schedule a running start advising appointment by bringing it to WWCC. We've been taking it online. A lot of high schools have um, electronic copies with PDFs where you can sign it in those fancy PDFs and sign, send that off to us. And then we get it and then we'll set up your advising appointment. Um, during the advising appointment, we'll talk you through uh, some more paperwork. Getting started, ready to start is a lot of paperwork at first, but after that, it's so much easier. Um, we sit there, we do a brief orientation, we have some paperwork, we talk about release information, we talk about what are your goals with running start, and then we talk about classes for the next quarter. 
after you advise, um, there is an orientation that you will need to attend and complete before you can actually register for classes. So that's part of the process. Um, before the quarter that you're going to start uh, comes, and every quarter, you need to pay your fees to the business office uh, by the tuition fee due date, and then show up for class. So timeline, now is the time to gather information. Have those conversations with your high school counselor, with your family, figure out if this is a good match for you and what kind of match would work for you. Um, I have had students who are very invested in their music program at the high school. So they wanna stay involved in that. I did, I was all in on that stuff. So you could do that and maybe take one or two courses at the college. Now's the time to start kind of game planning around that, what that's gonna look. April through September. Uh, April is the first time where you can start applying and completing the placement process, but we take students all the way through September until our quarter starts. Um, we begin advising May 3rd, and that's when you can have your, uh, we'll start making appointments um, for new Ready Start students, and we'll start that intake process for you. After you get advised, there will be orientations throughout the summer. Um, at, once you complete the orientation, you can sign up for those classes, and then kind of hang out and wait for the quarter starts. Make sure you pay your fees 10 days before the quarter starts and then attend those classes. So finally, Rain Start student responsibilities. So Rain Start students, it's your job to get your paperwork from your high school to the college and get those advising appointments. Um, nobody gets past advising. Um, you gotta advise with someone before you can sign up for classes. Um, you're responsible for being part of that conversation for meeting your graduation requirements. Yeah, we get the paperwork from the high school and we get it and we talk about classes, but you are part of that conversation about how are we gonna do it? How are we gonna time it? You don't have to do this in a lockstep moment. Sometimes you'll be busy, you'll be playing a sport or you're like, oh, I really don't wanna do that science class this term, could I do it a different term? And we'll talk about what that looks like. So you are part of that conversation. Um, dropping classes, you are responsible for being aware of those deadlines and dropping courses with consultation with your Rain Star advisor and also informing the high school. Again, communication is key. If you are university college bound um, upon high school graduation, taking the SAT and ACT is, you got to keep track of that stuff. Um, paying all fees, attending classes, we're not going to keep track of you. That's your job. Um, and be sure to communicate with your instructors, your Rain Start advisors, and your high school counselors. That sounds like a lot of work to do, but the payoff is that you have all these people pulling from you to, for you to be successful, and we're there to help, help you put the pieces together and make sure that we're all on the same page with what your needs are. And then finally, here's our context for Ready Start on Walla Walla Campus. It is me. My name is Diana Herman. You can email me at warrioradvising at wwcc.eu. And Clarkson Campus is Heather Mark Walter at heather.markwalter at wwcc.eu. Um, she is also the Disabilities Coordinator for the Clarkston Campus. So if you fit one of those categories, she is the person to contact. On Walla Walla Campus, Bobby Sue uh, Scudder is our Disability Support Services, and all of her contact information is on our website there. I included the student ambassador's website, uh, website email on there so you can contact them and get the real deal of what it's like to be a student at WWCC. And then finally, our website for Running Start information. Um, the recordings will be made available next week. So um, and we'll be sharing that out through social media um, and contacts with the high school. If you had some additional questions or if you run into someone who's like, oh, I missed that, we'll have the information available there. All right, that is my presentation. How are the questions looking? Well, surprisingly, I just have this one question so far, but I what? hope you guys, if you have any questions, start uh, typing them in, please. Uh, so this is, uh, do these steps apply to high school students, all high school students, or is it different for Mac High since it is in Oregon? Mm -hmm. so I assume okay. that means admissions. Yeah. So for students who um, attend Mac High, you're not actually eligible for a running start. Um, it is a, <clears throat> excuse me, it is a Washington State program for Washington State high schools. Um, if you are interested in doing high school from Mac High, um, let's talk because there are some 
we do have an underage enrollment policy, uh, which you could take classes as an underage student at the college by doing paperwork. We like our paperwork. Um, the challenge would be figuring out how to help you pay for those courses. Um, so I've had this conversation with other Mac High students and we've kind of figured it out and kind of put some pieces together. Or if it didn't work out at the time, we made a plan for the future for those students. Good question, it does come up. Okay, can these can the credits you earn at this college transfer to a college like LCSE? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna talk about that, Heather? Uh, well, um, almost all of these classes that you would take for your AA degree are gonna transfer seamlessly to LCSE. Um, I advise all Running Start students, and I know it's it's difficult to pin down what you think your bachelor's might be, especially if you're going into your junior year. But if you do know, um, every college has different requirements for math, English, science, well, not English so much, math, science, um, and other core classes. Um, and then every division at every college is is different and has different requirements as well, including LCSE. So let's say if you know that you're going to um, go into business and you want to go to LCSE, then when you're working on your AA with us, we would have you work on with your electives and with you, within your natural science um, core and your social science core and your humanities core, uh, making sure that you're getting the specific courses that are going to be required for that degree for that college. Um, so that is important. But again, my kids had no idea what they were going to do when they went to college and just went for their general AA. And um, that might mean that you have to take additional classes when you get to your four year school. Uh, but otherwise, if you complete your AA with us, when you transfer specifically to LCSE, you are considered core complete. And um, so they don't nitpick uh, specific under, not undergrad, help me, Diana. The lower division courses lower is the technical term. Courses, thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, they still may require that you have a specific math or, or a science class that you didn't take within your AA degree. Um, should I go into the, the other news or what do you, is that just making it more compl complicated, Diana? Um, let's hold off until we got the ink on the paper. Okay. <laughs> There's other good stuff coming. There let's is good stuff coming. We just don't have all the details yet. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Um, are placement tests in person or online? Uh, both, actually. Um, our testing center, um, it used to be just all in person, but you know, COVID changed our lives. So there is a possibility of doing remote testing if that works better for you or is a better option for you. You do need to have good internet access and a webcam and audio. Um, to do that. Um, the testing center makes individual appointments for on-campus testing, um, again, with all the COVID protocol in place. Um, they uh, work to communicate with students to see what the best option is and help them navigate through all those steps for that. But we do have both options available right now. Okay. Honors program. Are these oh. same as AP classes students takes at high school? Um, Oh gosh, okay, how do I, um, okay, so AP classes at high school. So you take the class, they are very rigorous, uh, no joke about that. Um, and for AP, you have the option at the end of your year in AP class to take the advanced placement test for that subject. And you have to pay for the test. Like last I checked it was 80 or $90, I could be wrong, but, um, if you score high enough on that exam, you could get college credit um, at a college or a university. How that score is translated is dependent upon the university. Community college, we have a set rule on 
every community college in Washington State, if you get a three on this exam, you get this class. Universities all do it differently. So, but it's still a great experience. It's awesome, fun class. You are in there with your fellow students in the AP course, usually having a pretty good time for my high school experience. Um, maybe that was just us. Um, honors at the college is, um, it's cohort based. You do have to have a 3.5 GPA coming from high school or after 15 college credits. Um, at the college in order to be eligible. Uh, most of our Rain Start students are eligible based on their high school uh, GPA to be eligible for the honors program. Um, that class, and there's different classes every quarter, and we kind of move it around towards different classes, is only eligible for um, honors program. And I know Clarkson's just a little bit different on their program, so I'm talking about Walla Walla. Um, that becomes your cohort for honors program. Um, it is your gang, um, everyone's in the honors program together, hanging out. Um, you get a grade for that class and it is college credit regardless of the grade, unless you don't pass it, but I've never seen that happen in an honors class. Um, honors classes at uh, the college are not intended to be harder. Um, they are intended to provide a different type of experience. So it'll be a little more challenging because there is, you're already, academically successful, there's a little bit higher expectations, but it's intended to be a different experience. So honors courses are, the students are more involved in the direction of the course. It's much more discussion-based rather than lecture-based. So that's kind of, I hope they answered the question well. All right, uh, let's see here. Can I complete an AA while taking band at Wahai? It is possible. So keep in mind to complete an AA degree, you need to be enrolled in full time 15 credits for six quarters in order to complete an AA degree. Um, if band is the only class that you are taking, you can take full time and have one class at the high school and still be eligible for 15 credits through Running Start. Um, if you're taking more than that, um, one, let's talk and make sure that you're taking a load that's going to be appropriate and not overwhelm you because health health and mental health and safety first um, but it is possible to do that are there any reductions or waivers of fees for students who have a parent who is a wwcc faculty member there is not sorry but you get the benefit of knowing heather and me bonus <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, let's see. Can a student be enrolled in pre-nursing at CTEC and still be a Running Start student? Um, yes. Um, I just uh, actually I have a student currently doing that. Um, actually, taking school, taking like a class or two at the high school, doing CTEC, and taking a course through Running Start at the college. Um, it is possible to do that. Um, it's a little bit of a juggle to make sure that you're, we, we got the schedule working for you and that you're taking the right classes at the right time, but it's possible to do. And for students at the Clarkston campus, um, we have students that take uh, dual credit through LCSE and through uh, Clarkston with Running Start. We also have students who take college and the high school classes um, at Pomeroy High School, for example, and do Running Start. And those are, again, we, we make sure that we select courses for you when we know where you want to transfer um, that are fully transferable and um, will we'll head to the institution that you indicate. It just makes it a little more difficult if you're undecided. And, you know, Diana, if you have any more thoughts on, on that, that maybe I didn't cover well. Um. I think the one of the things with Running Start is um, it's an opportunity to try something on. Um, I have had a, an undecided student who was like, I don't know what I want to do. I kind of like science. I was like, well, what science courses have you taken? None. But, all right, we're going to try something. So enrolled him in a biology class. Is it, try it out. See what you think. Take the biology class. 
saw him, oh gosh, next time I advised him. And he walked in and said, hey, how's that biology class going? He's like, this is it. This is what I'm doing. I have decided I'm going to be a biology major. I want to do wildlife conservation. This is my thing. And I was like, okay, let's talk plans. And then we talked about what that meant in regards to academic planning, what classes you do, all that kind of good stuff. Um, we have just recently hired an assistant director for career services, um, which is going to greatly expand our ability to do more career exploration um, and career assessments for students. Um, and that is something, again, that's gonna be part of first year experience. There'll be a little bit of that in first year experience. Um, and also that's gonna be part of the package deal of the advising experiences talking about where do you think you want to go from here and what can we do to help you navigate those waters question from a student so would i be going to the college almost full-time earning both college and high school credits like would i be going to high school um depends there's a lot of ways to do running start you can be almost full-time at the high school and still take one course out of the college. You can take um, no classes at the high school and still and be full-time at the college. Um, those are the conversations that I would have with your family and with your high school counselor. Um, check in to see where you are in regards to high school graduation. Does it make sense to get this all done? What is it gonna look like? But there's lots of different ways to do it. You don't have to be full-time. It's not all or nothing. It's kind of, kind of up to you on how you want to do it. Can you still qualify to be valed valedictorian when you graduate if you were enrolled full time in Running Start? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, that is up to your high school on their rules for that. Um, I have had a Running Start student be selected as valedictorian at her high school as one of our smaller local high schools. Um, that is something I would ask your high school counselor about on what the high school standing is on that. We have had that in our area too, but all of all of high school rules are dictated by each high school, mm -hmm. as Diana kind of indicated. We don't we don't get to make the rules for them. So any any of those specific questions would be directed to your high school counselors. Okay, what are some examples of classes that can be taken through Running Start as opposed to taking them at the high school? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, they really got good questions tonight. Oh, my gosh. Um, classes you can take. Okay, so uh, two different houses. So you could, as I mentioned before, if you wanted to, you could do a workforce program out at the uh, college, like, diesel, energy systems, um, agriculture, all those kind of like full-fledged workforce programs. Some of the more um, fun classes that are not at some of our local high schools, um, criminal justice is a popular one. Um, some of the more specialized psychology courses, um, uh, uh, some of the philosophy courses are are only at the college. Um, oh, some of the really like specialized science courses, um, like um, the college college of like biology majors course, like you spend a quarter on cell biology, a quarter on plant biology, and a quarter on animal biology. It is really a deep dive science course at the college. Um, God, that's a really that's a really tough question to ask me to answer right off the top of my head. Heather, do you it have is, anything? Because it really depends on um, what a student's goal is mm -hmm. and what pathway they're seeking. Um, but they can take most of or a number of the, the classes that are required for high school, government, English, math. They can do that at the college instead of doing it at the high school and earn dual credit. So in my opinion, why take it at high school when you can be getting college credit for it and have it paid for primarily by Running Start? And there, yes, there are fees um, if you don't qualify for free or reduced lunch, um, which waives some of those fees, but it's, it's cheaper than college is gonna be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, 
and definitely cheaper um, at a un than a university, but even cheaper than Walla Walla will be, you know, one, two, yeah. three years from now. Yeah. So um, some of the classes will be exactly the same. And then as Diana said, you can also, you know, broaden your horizons and there's just, there's, it's endless. It really, it's endless. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many different options. Um, I think one of the other things that is uh, kind of cool is, um, I don't know if anyone in here was, but I got bored with classes. Like, I was always like, okay, I'm, I'm bored with this, let's move on. And you get to change classes every quarter. Like, the classes you take in fall quarter do not have to be directly related to the courses that you take winter quarter. You could, you're taking a totally different set of classes from a different instructor and you know, you're starting fresh and you're doing a year of high school in 11 weeks, like full year, 11 weeks. So you're like, you're moving through those courses. Um, a lot of times when you start, students will complete their high school graduation requirements before the spring quarter of their senior year, um, just because just it moves faster. Can students take the CLEP test and get credit? Yes, wasn't expecting that one. Yes, <laughs> um, the CLEP test is as it's a separate exam outside of um, really outside of Running Start. You do have to pay that on your own. I can't remember how much it costs now. I think it's up to seventy five dollars. Heather, do you know off the top of your head? I do not remember. But okay, I can't remember. Close. Yeah, it was it's somewhere around there. Um, and then depending on the score that you get, a uh, Usually we have students who take the CLEP test for Spanish. And if you are fully bilingual, you can, you have you have the potential to get 15 credits um, off of the CLEP exam. Um, but there's lots of different topics for the CLEP exam, but that is a possibility. Next one is, so the very first step is to apply for admission to WWCC, not talk to the high school counselor. Um, you can't. And some high schools prefer for you to talk to the high school counselor before you start the process. Um, for WWCC, we that's not up to us. That is really like depending on your high school. Some high schools definitely want you to talk to them before you engage in Running Start. And there are some high schools that will just, oh, you do the placement, awesome. I think it's always a good idea to talk to your high school counselor before you start part of that planning process. Like, is this really gonna pay off for me? And be a good matchup with what I want from my high school experience and with my college experience. Um, but for the college, your first step would be applying. So far, that's the last question, unless anybody else wants to. Anything else? Chime in. Diana and I can go for hours if you have more things <laughs> to ask. And there's really, I mean, a lot of this is individualized, I guess I would say. So um, if you want to talk to your high school counselor, um, if you're a student, talk to your parents. Parents, if you have questions for us or students have questions for us, um, there's no wrong way to start the process. You can call and talk to us. You can start with your high school counselor. Um, it's, it is so individualized because all of you have different pathways in mind. Some of you know where you're going to head and, uh, what school you're going to end up at and what degree you're planning on, um, pursuing, although that does change frequently. Um, and that's, that's all okay, but we're here to guide you through the process. So whatever we can do to assist along the way, you've got our contact information and um, you can go through your high school counselors. They know how to get in touch with us as well. Yep. Anything else? Any other questions? Heather is right. We could go on for hours. We're going to, how many years combined do we have Heather of experience at the college? About 40. <laughs> and not no joke. No joke. Young and my picture is actually very old of me, but <laughs> we do have about 40 years of experience um, at WWCC and in higher education between the two of us. Um, been doing this a while. Yep. Um, and so in our experience, I would also say um, 
and just as my experience as a mom of college kids, um, you'll probably think of 10 things once this meeting's over. And if you're anything like me, you'll be like, oh, I can't believe I didn't ask this question, but um, reach out to us after and we'll be happy to uh, respond and, and answer whatever we can. We're here for you. Yep. Our contact information is on the Ready Start website, www.cc.edu slash running start. Uh, both of our contact information is there. This recording will be posted on there next week. Um, and the steps to enrollment are listed there as well with a friendly downloadable PDF. So you can kind of check off on your way down. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and getting through the full presentation, I know it's a lot of information, um, but we are here to help you understand the process and figure out what's gonna work best for um, students and their families. So you have a good positive experience with us. Um, if there's no other questions, I'm going to stop recording and end our Zoom session. Everyone have a really good night. Thank you so much for being here and uh, well done, Diana, as always. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good night, right. everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye.